Hi everybody, it's Richard Slay, and today we're going to focus on one of the all-time great blues instrumentals, the song Easy, originally recorded by Big Walter Horton. And I'm going to show you today how to play this song with no bent notes. Uh, I'll have some tab pulled up in a little bit. And also how to get a guitar player to back you up with a really good arrangement. The, a few details on the, on the chord voicings and the overall feel of the song so that you could get somebody to back you up. Or if you play harp and rack guitar like I was doing in the beginning of this video, how you can back yourself up on this tune. The thing that's so cool about this tune is you can take it from the absolute basic, basic, no bent note version to as far as you want to go. And if you listen to Big Walter's original recording, it's just amazing what he did with this tune. And there's a lot of other people that have covered it as well. So anyhow, without any further ado, let's just jump into first the melody and then some things about the guitar voicings and then a few ideas on how you can take your own improvisations up a level and then another and another. All right, see you soon. Okay, let's look at this PDF. You will need a key of A, diatonic harmonica, and the tablature 
is if you look at the numbers underneath the sheet music, the, the plain numbers are draw notes, the numbers with the pluses are blow notes. So let's take, a, I'm going to go, I'm going to walk through this uh, four measures at a time, and I'm going to repeat each measure twice. So you can just play along with me. I'll count it out. Here's the, the top line, the first four measures. One, two, three, four. Okay, one, two, three, four. Okay, now the second line, the second four measures. One, two, three, four. And now the last line, which looks a lot more complicated, has, has more chord changes, but we're going to play through it twice real slow, and you could keep looping this if you like, and also use the YouTube tool where you can slow things down if that helps. Okay, here we go. One, two, three, four. Now I'm going to play through the entire piece. I'm just going to count in once and play the whole way through. And then you can use this section to play along with if you're learning this song. One, two, three, four. Okay, now for guitar players, these are the chord charts for the three chords that I use that are a little out of the ordinary for this tune. And the first one is on the five chord, I'm playing a ninth chord with the fifth in the bass, which means here that instead of a standard E chord, I am playing a chord where I've got my first finger on that sixth string on the second fret, and then I've got my, uh, my second finger on the fourth string and first fret, and then the rest of it's a bar. And I, I usually just use my other two fingers instead of barring that chord. It's a little easier for me. You don't need to play the, the, the high E string to, to make this work. And I also am muting the string because I, I, I'm, I'm also pressing down 
and then releasing with my left hand and muting a little bit with my right hand just to make to give it more of that comping kind of sound. The next chord is the same thing up a half a fret. So that's that's the the voicings that I'm using when you see those those changes in the chart. And then the very last chord is a is a standard E chord. Only I'm putting my finger, uh, my, my little finger on the second fret of the second string, and that makes it into an E6. And that's how the original recording ended, and that's a great way when you get to that last 12 bars to, to wrap up the tune. Okay, guitar players. Once you get those chord forms under your belt and you know them, then you can follow along with this part of the of this uh, demonstration. And I am not going to go into, I'm not going to tab out the guitar part. I'm just going to give you some ideas and it, you could learn it by following along with this and uh, studying it or also, listen to the original recording. recording. Uh, there, there are some real interesting uh, little things that happen with the guitar that you'll hear uh, that can be confusing, but what I'm playing here is a very basic, guaranteed to work version of it. And I do, you can do either the walking bass line, like on the top uh, four measures, So I'm just playing those notes, uh, muting the strings with my uh, with my right hand to give it that feel. You could also just play a very just subtle, like. So that's one way to do it, or you can do the walking bass line for the one and the four chord. <laughs> I like the walking bass line, but whatever works for you at this point to get you going is, is, is what you run with. So let's dive into that last line. Now, you, you remember those chord forms, the uh, slide up a half strip. So that's, those are the chords you're using. And just uh, the other thing I do when I play those chords is I'm not just, I'm, I'm muting it with my right hand, with the heel of my hand, but I'm also pressing down on the strings and then letting up to also create muting from my left hand. And so what you're doing with this kind of uh, uh, approach to playing the guitar is you're creating a lot of support you're give you're putting in the bones of the piece you're you're getting in the bass line and with the muting the strings you're staying out of the way you're you're keeping out of the range of the harmonica and it's just a beautiful way to back up the harmonica without overpowering it and that's my cat chiming in all right, so now you've got the basic melody tabbed out and you've got the basic idea of what to do with the guitar part. 
So the, the ending of the song, uh, that other chord that I mentioned, this, the E sixth chord, it's, an e, it's a regular E chord with a pinky finger on the second string, second fret that gives you that nice. And here's how that comes in. I'm gonna play the last two measures. Da -da. I'll do that again. One, two, three. Oh. And that's the way I do it. I base it on the original recording, uh, but the main idea is just to leave lots of space and just put that chord in at the end. So if I played the last four measures, it would be... Okay, so if you're the harmonica player and you've worked this out with a guitar player, you want to have a good signal for when you're you're playing the last verse so that he know, he's ready to do that. Now I'm going to play two verses of this. It'll be the first verse and the last verse. I'm just going to skip all the improvisation in between. And this will give you uh, another thing to follow along with either on guitar, or harmonica, or both if you're if you're going for that. So one, two, three. there you go easy I highly recommend developing this tune to add to your kit if you play harp on the rack this is an excellent tune for coordinating the guitar with the harmonica and you can do all kinds of things with it and if you play with a band and they get the basics of this arrangement and can back you up it's a great tune for coffee houses and band stands or anything. So I hope you found this useful. I'll be back in a week. Have a good one. Take care. And if you found this useful, down below, click the like button, subscribe, tell your friends about this. Um, help me build up my list and uh, so more people can, can get in on the party. And I appreciate you listening to this, and I will be in touch. Take care.